Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. More Gibson models have dropped. Let's start with our main topic today, this guy, Gene Simmons of KISS. He's partnering with Gibson for multiple signature guitars and basses. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this, there isn't a bunch of information right now, but here's what we do know. Last night, Gibson teased this on their Instagram page. It kind of reminds me of like a gorilla's music video. They've got this TV that then flashes him with his tongue out and they say, hey, you, we're gonna tell you more at 10 a.m. Central Time on 1821. So that rolls around and their next post is this which is kind of annoyingly another teaser for something that will now come out on the 18th. But it looks like we're getting Gibson, Epiphone, and Kramer guitars with this guy. So this is what we got. We got G squared with this little logo, and they've released very limited photos of what looks to be a new signature base for Gene Simmons in the Thunderbird style. And we've got two of them here to look at. Albeit, we don't have very good photos at this time. So what this looks like to me is we get kind of a regular Thunderbird style body, except for it does not appear to be neck through. It appears it's going to be a set neck. Because normally a Thunderbird looks like this. It's essentially the base version of a Firebird. They've got the same style headstock, same style body, same style pickguard. Generally the same style construction with the neck through, but that's what's going to make this one different from all the rest. But the layout seems to be pretty basic here, just three knobs in a row with the top hat reflector knobs. You've got the same style of bridge as the other ones. They've changed up our pick guard, so it has some sort of a... Now, viewing it on my screen, I can't really zoom in, but I'm guessing it's this logo on it, which is interesting. I won't lie, I can't say I really like that logo on the base. I would much rather have, you know, some sort of a, a kissed out fire bird, that'd be cool. But it's looking like it's going to be like a matte black finish, so not full gloss. And they're giving us two different options. You can have the white trim, so this is fully bound, that's interesting. Or you can get one with the red trim. Now at first, I fell in love with the red trimmed one because it looks the most unique. Because I mean, look at that thing. The red pick guard, it appears we're even getting red binding on the fretboard. They tint the inlays a red color or just make it out of a red material. I think these things will look really cool in person, but maybe the stock photos aren't quite doing them justice. Because so far, I think the more silver slash white themed one actually plays off of the whole kiss thing better. Because I mean, look at this axe wielding guy. He's kind of black and white, black and silver. When I think kiss, those are the colors I go for. So you guys are going to have to help me when these things come out. I don't know which one I'm going to buy. <laughs> But speaking of the inlays, I love this choice. Good job, Gene, on that one. They're the split diamond inlays like you originally saw on like the Trini Lopez model. These inlays truly do not get used enough, so seeing those things make a comeback made me really happy. And that's a vast upgrade to dot inlays like you normally find. Now, I'm not sure if all Thunderbirds are unbound, but I think traditionally they're not. So that's something else that this base is going to have over top of that. But what I actually really enjoy here, it looks like instead of mounting the Gibson nameplate on the truss rod cover itself, they're inlaying it on the headstock in Mother of Pearl. So the red one gets a red one, and the other one also has a matching color. At this point in time, I don't think we have anything specific as far as pickups and electronics go, but so far, okay, I will gladly sacrifice the neck through construction for all these other cool cosmetic features. And the first time we actually saw one of these things live was at a KISS concert for New Year's Eve in Dubai. Now looking at it live, here we can see the Gibson logo up here and laid. We can see that the headstock still has the multi-layers going on, so I'm really appreciative of that. But the pickguard actually appears to be a mirror, as does the truss rod cover. Now I think that makes sense for KISS. But personally, I don't like mirrors on the guitar. I think that's going to take this from a really cool metal looking bass to a little bit too flashy and over the top. But that's kind of what the Kiss band is. Like we reviewed the Tommy Thayer before Les Paul. I thought it was kind of cool during the show. You can actually see him have a Gibson version of his white one. And it looks like Mr. Simmons has a whole bunch of picks just in case he loses some of them all taped around the outside of the bass. But I'm not really seeing anything that we haven't seen before right here. Oh, man. If they're going to mirror the pick guard, I sincerely hope that they do mirrored inlays. Now that would be a really cool feature. And here we can kind of see a brief moment of that red one. I'm not sure where this was particularly taken at. 
But I guess I can kind of see a slight reflective surface on that one too. Is the binding even going to be mirrored too? I think we're just gonna have to wait for these things to come out to know for 100% sure. So as of right now, these are the two bases that are planned, but they're saying that later on in the year, or maybe in another year, they're going to come out with this guy right here. I think this is like the little teaser there. So we're going to get the Thunderbirds this year and maybe next year or, or towards the end of 2021. We'll see the return of the Flying V base. Cesar was actually uh, posting a Flying V base on his personal Instagram account, and that kind of got me thinking, huh, are they going to do something with this? And I think we found their candidate for how they're going to do it. But if you read all these different press releases, they're also talking about a signature guitar, which it seems kind of strange to give a bassist a signature guitar, but crazier things have happened. But Gibson bassists have never gotten a lot of love, so I think this is a great thing for them to kind of kickstart that. And you know, whatever signature guitar that they end up coming out with, I'm sure that'll sell too. But this whole deal kind of sounds like a Slash collection, where it's not necessarily just a limited edition model. They're going to keep producing these things, at least for a year or two before they move into something else. So I'll be interested to see what Epiphone models come out of this, as well as what they'll do with Kramer with this guy. Because that seems to be how a lot of these artists are going. Not only will they get Gibson signatures, but they're also getting Kramer signatures. Hint, hint, wink, wink. I mean, KISS is such a huge band. I don't care if you don't know anything about music in general. You've heard of KISS. That's how big this band is. But as far as what the Flying V guitar is going to be, I hope it's not this. Because that'll just be a reissue of the New Century series, which was not popular in the slightest. Well, I guess we'll just have to see how that one goes. So I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions in the comments section on these new Gene Simmons Thunderbird signature. I think the biggest complaint I have, besides not being neck through, is they've kind of already done something similar with Nikki Six. Now, what's great about this is Simmons is not neck through. This one was. He had that little G stopper, I forget whatever he called it. I did the Epiphone version of one of these. But you can see it's kind of a similar guitar. The layout's a bit different. The pickups are different. We're going to have a different styled pick guard. No binding. So I guess now that I've looked at them side by side, they're different enough, but similar enough that people will probably be upset anyways. I think the binding's really going to change the look out of all these things. And for our second signature guitar today, we get Rick Beato getting his own signature Gibson model. I'm guessing this is going to be like a limited edition run of like 400 guitars. Similar to like that Lucas Nelson run. And I guess he's decided to do a double cut Les Paul special and all of the proceeds is going to go to a charity of his choice. And this has kind of brought up some controversy of do YouTubers deserve signature guitars? I think so. The rock stars of yesteryears, they reached so many people. So naturally, these companies would give them stuff so their reach would also be with their products in hand. So giving signature guitars to YouTubers that are popular and consistently get views. It's basically just the modern day equivalent of that. I mean, for example, his channel, 2 million. He's a very smart guy. He knows what he's talking about and he gets consistent views whenever he uploads. I'd say he's worthy of it. Heck, I think we need to give The Do a signature Gibson guitar. <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe he would play like a Les Paul Custom Access, but you'd have to make it like a bright pink color. He's a fantastic guitar player if you don't know him. And I'd love to see more signature YouTuber guitars, but I'm betting Gibson's using this kind of as a test market. And I think signature guitars are cool, so I'll definitely be picking one of these things up. Hopefully, hopefully he does something a little bit special to it besides just being a Les Paul special though. But it seems more and more companies are doing this. Like, like you had Jared Dines had a signature guitar. We had just reviewed the YY10, which you could technically say she's a YouTuber. I mean, she's more so an artist, but I first found her through YouTube, Yvette Young. So I think it's great that Gibson's starting to move into this realm. I think we're going to be seeing a Phil X signature guitar this year too. I mean, I get it. He's a really well-known session guitarist and now plays with Bon Jovi and everything. But I think his big break to super popularity online came from YouTube. I don't even care what the specs are. We have to check out Phil X's guitar. 
And now the last one that we'll talk about today, the old glory Epiphone Les Paul is getting a makeover for 2021. You can see we've got the new Epiphone headstock on it. Looks like he, did he go with a rosewood fretboard this time? But this is basically, uh, as far as specs go, it looks pretty similar, except for we no longer have the blues power plate on the back. He's now put it on the top of the headstock. I'm not sure when these things will start to hit the stores, but it's kind of cool. I'll let you guys in on a secret. I think it was about six months ago, uh, Jared texted me. He's like, dude, what do you think of this? What should I change? And at first it's like, eh, I don't know how I feel about the gold. I think the one thing I would change about it is do a, a cream pickup cover. That way it kind of matches the binding and it gives it a completely different vibe. But you know, if he wants the black plastic, that's good enough. But what sold me on this one is the way you type out the name. So his original one is Old Glory, right? But for gold, you just do that. So it's like g old glory. That's what sold it for me. <laughs> but I think that's going to do it for today to talk about newly leaked models because we don't have all the specs. We don't have all the information. It's just fun to learn about this stuff as it's coming out. That's why the beginning of the year is always so much fun. I'm here with you guys nearly every single day. So I'll keep you up to the minute as best as I can because this is the most exciting time of year. All right, troglodytes. Thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.